A new era is about to begin in Oxford. Ole Miss this offseason fired Kermit Davis as their head coach and made somewhat of a controversial hire in none other than Chris Beard. We won't get into the charges that were dropped against Beard, but after getting fired from the Texas Longhorns, Beard is now looking to build something special down in Oxford, Mississippi. David, what did you think about the moves Chris Beard made in the offseason? Um, I grade, uh, let's go with the coaching hire as a WTF. And then as far as the transfer moves he made, yeah, they're pretty good. We're just going to wait to see what happens with these dang waivers. They're absolutely insane. Of course, we know that Alan Flanagan will be approved, um, but we're waiting to find out more on who else is going to be joining uh, this Ole Miss team this season. They've got the roster. Now can they get them on the floor? That's my question with the moves that have been made this offseason with Ole Miss. Definitely a lot of questions still surrounding this team, but we'll dive into it and talk about the changes and expectations we have at Ole Miss on the Hoop Southbound show today. The Tennessee Volunteers are going to the Sweet 16. Florida takes its place in history. Back to back and unforgettable. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Falls with the dunk at the buzzer. It goes in Arkansas. We are in the Home Field Apparel studio today where they know college. Make sure and check out Home Field Apparel today and use promo code Variety Sports to get whatever team swag you need for this season. Great stuff over there. Absolutely great stuff. (laughs) Definitely one of the most comfortable shirts I own, for sure. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) All right, David, let's jump in, play a little buy or BS for this Ole Miss team. Um, I'll start out. We can go back and forth. but. First one's coming at you. Ole Miss will make the NCAA tournament this season. I've got BS on this. Look, I think this is a great start for a new era there in Oxford and everything else. Chris Beard is definitely bringing some optimism in the Ole Miss world, but I don't don't necessarily see that they have all the pieces that they need to make the NCAA tournament this year, especially with the waiver situation they've got going on. There's still a lot of question marks around this team. So for now, I am definitely going BS on this. I'm not feeling um, Ole Miss in the NCAA tournament. I know there have been some vibes that maybe, just maybe, they could go deep into the tournament. I'm not feeling that at all uh, from this Ole Miss team. But that's just my opinion. I'm one dude. Maddie, Jamarian Sharp will lead the SEC in blocks this season. Almost got five a game last year. I'm going to buy this one. Mm. I think... Mr. Sharp is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, You know, we saw how Beard kind of runs things for a little bit, at least last season with Texas. And I feel like it's going to be very heavy on the front court. So I think Jamarian Sharp is going to get a lot of play, especially on defense. And I think we'll see him make a major impact for this Ole Miss team. Yeah, it should be fun. I mean, they're going to have some rim protection out of him this season. Um, Definitely a great shot blocker. Um, should be a great addition. And like we've talked about several times, almost every team in the SEC has a great big. Uh, this seems to be Ole Miss's addition there with Jamarian Sharp. All right. Matt Morrell will be an NBA draft pick this season. Ooh. So here's where I'm hung up on this is the fact that I don't I think he'll be in the NBA next year. I think he'll be in the NBA. He'll make a roster. He'll probably go to the G League. But a draft pick is kind of hard for me to buy. So I'm going to BS this, and I'm going to say that he makes it as a free agent into the NBA. Uh, Of course, last year he got invited to elite camp. Uh, So I'm thinking that Matthew Morrell does not make it to uh, the NBA via draft. I think he's going to be a free agent. Um, He did not advance at elite camp last year. I think he might get an invite to the combine, but we'll see what happens with Matthew Morrell. Um, he could have a great season, and he's got a really good coach in there to bring his game to the next level. So I'm not it's not a total sell, but like I'm BSing it for now. Yeah, I think Matt Morell was Kermit Davis's only saving grace last season and had he- helped him keep the job for as long as he had last year. Um, you know, we saw the Matt Morell injury, and it really tanked the stock of Ole Miss. So speaking of their star player, let's turn to the roster. Um, where it's changed up a lot since last season. 
There's a lot of concerns on this team, mainly based on the waiver situation, um, as we've discussed before. We know that Flanagan was finally approved by the SEC for his in-conference transfer. That's one down, but they still have a few more to go. Let's take a look at the roster. David, who is your player to watch? Yeah, I'm still, this week it seems to be um, the week that I'm bucking my trend of uh, taking newcomers. But yeah, I'm rocking with Ole Miss's best player last year on this team. And I don't think, I think he's about to have a pretty good year under Beard. That's Matthew Morrell, uh, returned from the G League Elite Camp, like I mentioned. He averaged 14.4 points per game last season, racked up 3.5 rebounds. Obvious starter for Ole Miss this year. I expect him to have a good year under Beard. And you have to think he'll be featured in the game plan every week uh, this season. So very high on him, player to watch. I I expect him to be a great leader in this first year for um, Ole Miss. Yeah, I think as long as Ole Miss has a decent season, Bamarill is going to be a huge highlight um, coming out of the SEC this season. So for me, I I guess I'm going to take over your new face for the game uh, stick here, David, this week. And I'm going to go with a new face for Ole Miss fans. As a senior forward for Chris Beard's squad, Jamarian Sharp, someone we mentioned earlier, is a large, both literally and figuratively, piece for this team. At yeah. seven foot five, 235 pounds, he led all of college basketball last year in blocks with 131 at 4.1 blocks per game. He broke WKU's career block record in January with a month and a half of basketball left to play. Not only does he provide more rejections than the cheerleader in an 80s rom-com, he averages 7.4 points and 7.7 boards a game. He was named Conference USA's Defensive Player of the Year, as well as being named to the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year watch list and the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar watch list. And that was all just in the 22-23 season. He's crazy. He's 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 a monster. I, I'm telling you, he's, he's going to be a great addition to this conference this year. I mean, fun, fun, fun player to look at. Um, yeah, Sharp's going to be a thrilling addition. Definitely. So speaking of Jamarian Sharp, let's turn to the front court. David, both you and I had some pretty decent praise for Ole Miss's front court previously this season. What are your thoughts overall on this front court? This team would probably would have been in my top five if it wasn't for the circumstances surrounding um, one of, you know, their front court and all the waivers that are going on. Beard overall put together a very good portal class uh, in Oxford. It's not particularly deep, but this team is overall very talented and will ha- excel at rim protection. Um, if, like you mentioned, rejected people like an 80s rom-com, I'm going to call him God's, like a Godzilla movie. He's the biggest thing out there. He's stomping on buildings. Uh, Jamarian Sharp from Western Kentucky, absolute monster. You've already gone over the stats. Uh, average four pl- blocks a game last season, almost five. Big, scary center for Ole Miss. Should be the starting center for Beard this season. Uh, I'm also expect Breakfield to have a pretty good year. Uh, Average just over 11 points a game last year, and he was over 50 for 50 percent from the floor. Uh, so solid piece, solid returner there for Chris Beard. Now the guy with some questions uh, around this transfer is, of course, Moses Cisse. Uh, this is the second time he's transferred, and it's going to have to get a waiver under the new transfer portal rules. Now he's a good player, should get some floor time if he's on there. Seven one big man. Uh, also put up seven points a game, averaged eight rebounds a game for Oklahoma State. He's a decent shock blocker who averaged two blocks a game. This is the reason I don't have this. The reason I don't have Ole Miss though in my top five front courts in a previous episode. Like I said, it it all comes down to these waivers because they they've got they've got issues that they're going to be dealing with. Um, according to 24/7's Isaac Trotter, though, by letter of the law, he says should be forced to sit out a year. So we're going to see how it works out. Um, but I would not necessarily expect him to be contributing to this uh, front court this season. Yeah, definitely some concerns, but I do think they have some solid pieces to make it through, um, you know, barring the waivers. I think Coach Beard may have assembled the Avengers of the college basketball front courts this season. If all works out in his favor, like I said, with the waivers, I think Ole Miss may have one of the nastiest shot blocking Lockdown down groups of big men bullies in the paint. And I personally am super excited to see that style of play in basketball again. Oh yeah, no, it, it's going to be fun. Like regardless if CSA gets out there or not, it's they're still going to have some nasty dudes in the front court. So it's going to be a tough, tough battle on the glass every night uh, there in Oxford. 
Yeah, for sure. So, you know, they have a solid opportunity down low, but let's turn and look at the back court a little bit. Just like the front court, there's some waiver issues that still lie in wait. But David, how do you feel about this back court overall? Yeah, the big question is the backcourt. Um, in the in that backcourt, the biggest question is Brandon Murray. Is he going to be allowed to play this season? Two time transfer who isn't a graduate. We'll see how things go with the NCAA. Um, this year, Ole Miss also returned Matthew Morrell. I've touched on him already. Solid player. Um, Ole Miss is also adding Austin Nunez, who wasn't a high volume scorer for Arizona State last year, but he did shoot over thirty seven percent from three last season. Then you got Alan Flanagan out of Auburn, who averaged over 10 points a game last year and five rebounds. It's not a deep backcourt, um, but it does have a few good pieces. Ultimately, they'll need Brandon Murray to get where they want to go this season. But like I said, they got a couple of talented pieces to put a decent roster out there on the court. It should not be a total liability until you get serious into that depth in the uh, backcourt. Yeah, like you mentioned, David, there may be some talent that gets stuck in limbo due to the waivers, but I think Beard has enough solid pieces to get the job done with this backcourt. Like you mentioned, Matt Morrell returning. Then we have Flanagan. We've got Jalen Murray, who was a solid guard as well, and Rashad Marshall, both transferring or committing. Um, So I think they have a few pieces that are going to be able to work for this Ole Miss offense, but I think they are still going to rely a lot on the front court. Um, to either grab a board and take it back up, get, grab a second chance opportunity, or just bully their way down in the paint. Yeah, if you're looking at the graphic right now on the YouTube channel, uh, you might notice that Rashad Marshall is not listed in our backcourt, but he can be moved to the wing spot uh, as a number three. So that's why Maddie's mentioning him here. I've got him listed in my front court on my notes. Uh, so it just came down to who was making the graphics today on this. But I do think he he's a solid piece. Just missed out on the top, our freshman 15 this season. Uh, he's the number 16 player coming into the SEC, or number 16 freshman coming into the SEC, according to 24-7 Sports this season. Comes from Arkansas, uh, out there in Batesville in eastern Arkansas. Really good basketball player. Uh, should be a ton of fun to watch uh, this year for Ole Miss. Definitely. So now that we've talked about the roster, let's take a look at the schedule for Ole Miss. It very much looks like the non-conference schedule you'd almost expect from a first-year coach, but there are a few opportunities uh, for some help in the net here. Ole Miss starts off their season with four mid-majors in Alabama State, Eastern Washington, Detroit Mercy, and Sam Houston State, and then a road trip to face Temple, an AAC team. Any rough spots you see in this stretch, David? Um... Sam Houston State's going to be interesting, I think. That may be a more competitive game than you necessarily want. They were a good team last year, um, but they aren't projected to be super high in Conference USA this season, but it, they should still field a decent team. They got a good coach there. Uh, so Sam Houston State may be a tough one um, to pay it, you know, to get through. But for the rest of these games, I don't really see too much uh, panic. The Temple game will be interesting because that's your first road trip, and Temple's a quality program trying to get back to its glory days of the 90s. So it's uh, it, there's a lot that could be a tough environment to go into for your first road trip. But ultimately, I think you could go 4-0 here if you're Ole Miss. Yeah, I, I think, like you said, Sam Houston State could be a nasty battle here for Ole Miss. Um, really depends on what players we see on the floor. And then, like I said, Temple as well. A road trip, one of their best players – transferred out could give us a little bit of hope but you know when you've got um a transfer that's good enough to come to a school that there's know, plenty of talented pieces up there win. yeah exactly. there's plenty of talented pieces up there at, in temple they're they're trying to go somewhere that's their quality um so don't don't sleep on it just because you see temple and they've been bad the last couple of seasons they're gonna fight you pretty hard because that that is a program trying to go back into you know, some of their more historic direction up there. So they're trying really hard to get back to what they were. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, after that game, um, like you said, it's going to be a little tougher than the others. It continues to turn up. We've got North Carolina State at home uh, for Ole Miss and their draw for the ACC SEC Challenge that wraps up the month of November for Ole Miss. Thoughts on that game? Yeah, I think it's going to be, it'll be fun. Uh, you've got Jaden Taylor, 
uh, DJ Horn, uh, Casey Marcel, MJ Rice, DJ Burns uh, there for North Carolina State. North Carolina State looks like a team that's going to be somewhat competitive in the ACC this season. Uh, might be fighting for a spot to get into the conference, uh, or not the conference, but the NCAA tournament. They're ranked seventh, according to Rothstein, is where he's got them in his pa- ACC power rankings. I don't know if I necessarily agree with Rothstein here. I think they might be a little bit higher than that, but we're going to see. Um, this seems to be one of the better matchups in the ACC SEC challenge this year. Um, two teams that you kind of not sure, I think, at the end of the day, exactly what you're going to get. So it'll be fun. I think both these teams are going to end up being two teams that may be outside the NCAA tournament that are going to be competitive with each other in this game of the ACC SEC challenge. Yeah, I think this game definitely helps the net for Ole Miss. Either way um, that the dice roll here, like you said, North Carolina State, probably a little bit better than some people are. Anticipating. Yeah. And, um, you know, could be an interesting game. I think it is one of the better matchups, like you said, um, that we got in the ACC SEC draw. So it'll be a good game to watch for sure. And then we will move to December. Um, and Ole Miss is going to face a team that we've talked a lot about. A lot. A lot about. <laughs> They're going to be facing up against Memphis, who we have said time and time again. This is going to be an exciting team to watch this season. So this is going to be big for recruiting. Think about proximity level. Um, kind of right there on top of each other. So what are your thoughts in this game here, David? Yeah, so Rothstein has Memphis as number 30 team uh, this season. Of course, we'll see how Memphis gets things started. They're facing a lot of SEC teams, a lot of SEC teams. We just keep talking about them and talking about them. And uh, yeah, they got Javon Quinterly, really good player. Um, you know, he was already named uh, first team All-American uh, Conference uh, this for this preseason. Memphis expected to finish second in the American this year. Definitely an upper tier team. Uh, in the American Conference, you know, just outside that power level really is where the American Conference lies nowadays. Um, But Memphis should be really good. It's going to be a difficult, difficult game for Ole Miss to play in um, the game they lost last season. So, yeah, I'm going with Memphis here instinctively. I think that's probably going to be the case, but it should be better than last year's game. So I'm vibing with Memphis, but like it'll be a fun, fun game to watch. Yeah, I think this is right on the cusp of when Penny comes back from Memphis. So they should be ready to roll with their leader in charge there. It's going to be a rough one for Ole Miss. I, I think. It'll be a tough game. Yeah. So then after that one, hopefully they're able to rest up um, after what will definitely be a hard fought game either way that it goes. Ole Miss is going to take on Mount St. Mary's and then take a trip to Orlando to play UCF. UCF isn't a team expected to make a ton of noise in the Big 12 this year, though. What are your thoughts here, David? Yeah, so um, I think Ole Miss is going to have more fun going to Disney World than playing uh, UCF. Not because they're going to have a hard time with UCF. It's because, like, riding those roller coasters might be a bigger challenge for them. Uh, UCF, um, yeah, let me throw the names out there. Darius Johnson, uh, Jalen Sellers, Antoine Jones, C.J. Walker. Uh, Yeah, really you know, this this UCF team is not expected to do anything, really, in the uh, Big 12 this season. Just, they're not. They, this Last year, they were probably a little bit better than what they got going on on the floor this year. Uh, UCF, first year in the Big 12, they're probably going to get beat up a little bit this season throughout the course of things. I think Ole Miss uh, should beat uh, UCF there in Orlando, even, even in a road game, in a road game again. They lost this game last year. Um, but I think Ole Miss has got this one in the I, – I would expect Ole Miss to win this one. Now, first-year coach, new situation, a lot of transfers. We'll see what happens. But I, I would be willing to put money on Ole Miss, I think. Like, that's that's how I'm feeling with this. <laughs> okay, we need to see your betting stuff after you after you do it then. We'll see. We'll see if I, if I reveal that. <laughs> All right. And next, as part of the Hall of Fame series, Ole Miss is going to face Cal in San Antonio. Pretty historic program at Cal. What are you thinking there, David? Yeah, I think Mark Madsen, uh, he's the new coach there at Cal. It'll be a fun first year. Two first year coaches going at it. Of course, uh, different resumes entirely for both these guys. Um, I'm thinking that the more experienced coach wins here uh, there in San Antonio. It's a pretty good neutral site game there uh, at AT AT&T. But I'm thinking Ole Miss wins this one. That being said, Cal should give Ole Miss a pretty darn good fight. These are two very good coaches. Um, so I expect this to be a pretty darn good game. 
course, I don't expect too much out of Cal this year in the Pac-12. But overall, I, I am thinking Ole Miss here. Let me throw out a few names here for the Cal team. If I can find my notes, good grief, David. Are you just having a bad day today or what's going on here? All right, uh, Devin Eskew, uh, Jalen Cohn, Keontae Kennedy, Grant Newell. Uh, yeah, there's there's some quality players here, some good transfers like Jalen uh, Jalen Tyson from Texas Tech and a couple of guys actually from Texas Tech joining this team. And then Keontae uh, Kennedy from Memphis will also be joining this Cal team this year. But I, I don't particularly think this is going to be a strong enough Cal team to overcome the experience that Chris Beard has. Now, last time that we had someone talking about experience and how great of a coach uh, Chris Beard was, um, at least in an Arkansas fandom, it was Texas Tech versus Arkansas, and we all know how that one went. Um, so, yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think Chris Beard's a really good coach. So um, hopefully I won't stick my foot in my mouth there for uh, for uh, Mr. Mr. Martin. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and proximity-wise, Ole Miss, obviously a little bit closer, might have a little bit more advantage when it comes to fans. Um, and Getting there, we'll see. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> Ole Miss, after that, will wrap up their non-conference with Troy, Southern Miss, and Bryant. feel like these are going to be pretty easy to slide through for Coach Beard and crew. What are you thinking here, David? Look out for that Southern Miss game. Uh, I'm going to throw it out there right now. I've been doing a lot of research in my mid-majors basketball here lately, um, which is why I'm kind of off my game today. Um, but Southern Miss, good team, actually. Um, really good team. And that's going to be on a neutral site in Biloxi, a little bit closer to Southern Miss's neck of the woods there in Hattiesburg. Uh, so, like, that will be a tough game that not a lot of people are expecting to be tough. Um, if projections are right right now. So I think Southern Miss and Ole Miss is going to be a really good game to watch. Uh, one to pay attention to. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Um, neutral site game should be a lot of fun. Again, though, Chris Beard, I think, is the better coach in this scenario. But Old Southern Miss just have a roster. So it, that could be a pretty tough game. The other ones. Yeah, I'm thinking Ole Miss wins. Um, now, Bryant team that's trying to get some go in some direction in their athletics department. They're putting together a good program, but we'll see how it goes for Bryant. Um, and also it's also that weird time of year where our, the students aren't necessarily there. So you never know what happens. And this is when North Alabama beat Ole Miss last season. Um, it's that time of year where these kind of things happen. <laughs> but also a much different Ole Miss team than we saw. Last much year. different Ole Miss team. Got to <laughs> gotta note that. Definitely. So ending out non-conference there, let's jump into the conference schedule. Ole Miss is going to see Auburn, Mississippi State, Missouri, South Carolina, and Texas A&M in home and home series there. They're all going to play them twice. At home, they are going to see Arkansas, Alabama, Florida, and Vanderbilt. And on the road, they are going to travel to Georgia, Kentucky, LSU, and Tennessee. What are your thoughts here on this conference schedule, David? Ole Miss couldn't ask for a better conference schedule. Honestly, like, look at this thing. They've got Auburn. Uh, twice, which, you know, bringing a game into your place is going to help. Mississippi State, who we don't know when Tolu Smith is coming back right now. So that could play into uh, Ole Miss's favor. Uh, Missouri is going to be one of those teams that I think is going to be around that bubble portion, seeing if they get into the NCAA tournament or not. Playing them twice is going to be an important game for your schedule. And then South Carolina, you might as well put some W's up. Um, we'll, we'll just see. We'll see. South Carolina, I'm not expecting a lot out of. The toughest... The toughest home and home series they got here was Texas A&M. Now, let's look at these home games. Like I said, again, favorable. Alabama's coming in. Florida's coming in. Arkansas's coming in. That's great uh, for Ole Miss. Got to beat Vanderbilt, though, when they show up because that's another team that I think is going to be toward the bottom. And then on the road, you've got Georgia, who's going to be good. Kentucky, obviously, uh, and then Tennessee. But you got LSU also on the road. So if they're improved, that could also help your net if you can pick up that game and LSU on the road. So overall... I don't think it's a particularly bad conference schedule. Now, the timing of these games might make a difference, but overall, you can ask for a better draw if you're Ole Miss. I think this is a pretty solid draw for the first year for Chris Beard. Yeah, I think maybe swap out one of those home-and-home uh, -home series and switch out Kentucky on the road maybe with Vanderbilt. I yeah. don't know, but that, that might be the only chance that it gets any better. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it, it almost worked out perfect, in my opinion. For they, they, I think Ole Miss may have gotten the best schedule in the SEC uh, for you know your chances in the conference standing. So we'll we'll see how it goes from the season, um, how it impacts their net and their resume. We'll see, but overall, yeah, not bad. 
not bad. <laughs> it's going to be tough still because it's still the SEC, but you got a good draw. <laughs> oh, for sure. So, barring what we know with the waivers, take those off of the table, see this team as it is right now. I'm going with a 17.5 as the win total. David, you're going to go over or under there? That's a... a going to go under. I'm going to go under. I don't have a miss in the NCAA tournament. Um, so I'm going to say that they don't make it to 18. I think they're going to win 17 games this season. So I'm going to go under this number, um, believe it or not. That being said, I don't think they'll slip below 500 uh, in the regular season. They should be good there. Could make it to 17. Um, you know, so I, I don't think it'll be particularly bad, bad. Um, you know, it'll be a much improved Ole Miss team, but we'll see what happens. These waivers, if the waivers come the way that Ole Miss wants them to come, throw that number completely out the window because like, it's going to change things. It's going to change things a lot. If you get Brandon Murray or a CSA in your lineup. Yeah, for sure. So it sounds like your expectations, expectations, maybe a little low for this Ole Miss team. Uh, you know, probably expecting something different with Ole Miss fans, but so lower expectations. What are what is your floor and ceiling then for this team? Let's start with the floor. Waivers don't work out. This team struggles to get its chemistry together. They lose some games they shouldn't. They're still going to be a better team than what they were last year. They may only won 12 games last season. So let's say they finish somewhere in the bottom six of the SEC. They probably still, you know, get 15, 16 games. So a program still going in the right direction. Um, would be their floor this season. As far as the ceiling, if everything goes perfect, Ole Miss proves to be a, fir- a force. They win 20 games. They finish eighth or better in the SEC. Um, they make the tournament push maybe for uh, the round of 32. That's that's the perfect scenario. That's that's not only the roof, or that's not only the ceiling, that might be the roof. Um, my expectation, winning record. They win some games they shouldn't. They even get put in the bracket sometime during December or early January, but then it just kind of starts unwinding there during conference play for them. They finish somewhere just off the bubble. Uh, Missing the tournament, but make the NIT is kind of what I'm thinking could happen here. But it's Chris Beard, and hey, they might even do one step better than that. What are you thinking, Maddie? So, you know, great months think alike here, David, because I have basically a copy-paste of what you (laughs) Uh, just gave us but like you said the waivers are really what's holding this team back if they are approved this totally changes the trajectory of this team if they're denied I think we at least see a winning record at least (laughs) yeah for the floor here I'm thinking around 15 games definitely an improvement from the season before but not where we thought we'd see Beard sitting in a program as far as the ceiling goes if everything goes to plan if those waivers get that green check mark and we see a fantastic Ole Miss team I think they could be a bubble team and finish somewhere around 1920 games you know I expect them to at least have a winning season and give fans um some hope for years to come after last year yeah oh for sure that's that's where I'm vibing at it's like this is going to be a good first year I think for Ole Miss in the direction they're headed right now all right well thank you everyone for joining us today to talk about Ole Miss Next time, we're going to be talking with Colin Taylor from Gamecock Central about the South Carolina Gamecocks. You don't want to miss that one, so please like and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Spotify or however you want to check out the show. We'll see you next time on the Hoops Southbound Podcast. Thanks, guys.